I'm Brian Goulet of the Goulet Pen Company and Ink Nouveau, and today I'm reviewing Pilot Hiroshizuku Takesumi. It is a black ink, the only black ink in the entire Hiroshizuku series. They have 24 different colors and they just recently released the three that will complete the series, one of which is Takesumi. Now you may be asking yourself, why do we need another black ink? If you look on my website, we literally have 50 different black inks. Well, it's, it's one of the most popular fountain pen colors, probably the most popular, I would say, mainly because it's universal. You can use it at home, you can use it at work, you can use it on legal documents. It's a very universally accepted ink color, and it's, you know, people like black. It's common, it matches everything. Same reason people like to wear black clothing, it just matches everything. But Pilot Hiroshizuku has got some great properties to it, very popular ink series. I was really excited that they were releasing a black because it kind of seemed unnatural that they didn't have one all along anyway. The ink's been out for a few years and it's only recently that they've come out with this black ink. So I'm going to dive into it today, show you what it looks like and how it compares to some of the other black inks that are out there. And then you can see for yourself if the world really needs another black ink. Pilot definitely has a way with doing their packaging. I love the box, love the styling. The bottle's gorgeous. Nice big opening, deep well to be able to stick your pen in. You know, a little dip down on the bottom. Very good stuff. You know, you do pay a premium for this ink. It's $35 list. You can find it in most places at about $28. Uh, but you definitely get what you're paying for when it comes to the packaging. Sorry, I'm undoing my little string here. There we go. It's like a little scarf for your ink bottle. Anyway, this is Takesumi. It's uh, Pilot Hiroshizuku's black and only, only black ink. Um, now, Namiki, at least in the US, there is Namiki black already, which is a little bit different than this. Um, this is, you know, part of the Hiroshizuku series. There's 24 inks in the series. And I'm very pleased with it for the most part. I was really excited initially about when it came out because I was hoping that it would have the tremendous dry time, fast dry time, that the other Hiroshizuku inks are known for. Well, I didn't quite get that with this. I'll get all into it here in a second. Okay, so I used Rhodia 80 gram dot pad white paper. It's one of my favorite papers. It is very ink resistant, so dry time is usually quite extended on this paper versus some others. Used a Lamy All Star with a medium steel nib, and I'm testing the ink, I did find the dry time to be a little bit longer than what I was hoping. Most of the Hiroshizuku inks dry within five to 10 seconds. I found that actually all three of the recent ones, Amairo, Shinkai, and Takesumi, all have a pretty extended dry time. This one was upwards of 30 seconds. Now it didn't smear too bad in the later, you know, 20, 30 seconds, but it was still noticeable, so I had to point it out. Uh, water resistance is not fantastic, but I wasn't really expecting that at all. You can still read what you're writing and you get some smearing. And, uh, you know, if you do any kind of ink washing or anything like that, you do get kind of this uh, yellowish greenish hue when you wipe the ink uh, with something wet. So that's kind of interesting. Um, it's a pretty saturated ink color, though. I mean, it's, it's a fairly dark black ink. I was expecting, because the name, you know, means bamboo charcoal. The charcoal part worried me because I was concerned that it was going to be more of a gray than a black. But make no mistake, this is a black ink through and through. You can see how saturated it is by the fact that I did a single swab and then a second swab and then a third swab. And you really can't tell the difference between the first and the third swab. It's just straight black. I mean, there's really no shading to it at all. It's just straight black. So for those of you that like, very little saturation or no saturation at all in your inks, you're going to like the way that this performs. Um, it's still very easy to clean out of the pen though. Usually when you're dealing with really dark saturated inks, especially blacks, you can run into some problems with it being hard to clean out of your pen. But this flush is nice and easy, just like all the other Hiroshizukus. I was very happy about that. Um, and then the flow is wet, smooth, just like all the other Hiroshizukus that I would expect that they would perform and it did not let down. The only thing that was different for me than what I was expecting was that dry time, but personally, I'm used to using papers like Rhodia and I'm used to having a really long dry time anyway. 
I would say if you're gonna if you're left-handed or something, you may have some complications. If you are an overwriter, you know, and you smear your hand across the ink or something like that, then you may not be in love with the length of time that this takes to dry, but for most other people, it's not gonna be a problem. I use it in a Lamy Steel Extra Fine, as well as a broad. Um, it definitely looks a little bit lighter when you use it in an Extra Fine. It looks darker in the broad, as you can very plainly see here. One thing that is kind of um, worth pointing out, in the swab, uh, you know, you're not able to see much of anything except black. But when I got into like the second and third level swabs here, I was able to see just a little bit of a reddish sheen. I really don't think it's anything that you're going to see in your normal writing, unless you're just writing with an absolute gusher of a pen or maybe a dip pen or something. But it's just little, little fringes there. So I thought it was something worth pointing out. Usually when you get black inks, they tend to lean yellow or they tend to lean red. That's pretty much what you get. And this one is fairly true black, but it leans just a little bit red, I would say. I tested it on a couple of different papers. Um, HP 24 pound laser jet paper is kind of like a good middle of the road, somewhat premium paper that I like to, uh, that I like to test. Uh, and you'll notice there's even a big difference between uh, you know, the Rhodia paper and this in terms of its dry time. The Rhodia was upwards of 30 seconds. This was completely dry by 10 seconds. And this is still fairly smooth, fairly good paper. Um, you can tell a little bit of a difference with the paper. This is a little bit more absorbent. So even with the same pen, same nib, the line is going to look a little bit wider on the HP paper than it does on the Rhodia. That's part of why I love Rhodia. It's consistent, you know what you're getting, and it keeps that ink tight to the line that you're writing. It kind of gives you a more true, you know, ink line to what your nib size actually is versus if you have an absorbent paper, you know, who knows how big it can make your writing look because it's absorbing and spreading out in the paper. But HP is not too bad in that respect, but it is, you know, just nitpicking here. It's a little bit, little bit more absorbent than the Rhodia. But the trade-off is you get a better dry time. Uh, and then using it on junk paper, you know, just some Mead College rules, like a $1 notebook, um, it dried under five seconds. So even though it's got that extended dry time on the really, the really wet, um, you know, ink-resistant paper, still performs well on the cheaper stuff. And it doesn't look feather or, or, you know, do too bad there, even though this is, you know, not really great stuff. And looks really dark. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, look real chalky or washed out or anything like that. It, even on, this, on the more absorbent papers, it still looks really dark, still looks really black. If you're using it with an extra fine nib or something really thin and small, it would probably look even better than it does with this, you know, relatively wet nib. And then on the back, you know, I did get some bleeding, which was very much to be expected on this paper. Really not as bad as it could have been, though. Especially if you're using it on an extra fine or something really narrow, uh, it's going to perform admirably. <clears throat> so, one ink I wanted to compare it to was Noodler's Black. It's hard not to compare something to Noodler's Black because it is, by and large, the most popular black color out there. Heart of Darkness is a close second, but Noodler's Black is kind of the standard. The saturation level of Noodler's Black is a little bit more than Takesumi, but Takesumi still really kind of holds up. Noodler's Black, though, when you compare them side by side, especially when you do the smearing, you can tell Noodler's Black has more of a yellowish tinge to it than the slightly reddish tinge of Takesumi. Um, Noodler's Black has the extended dry time thing as well, high saturation. The thing you're getting with Noodler's Black, though, is water resistance. I mean, doing the same tests, you can tell the difference there, but it's a little bit harder to clean out of the pen. Um, you know, it is, if you spill it on your clothes, it's going to stain. So there's definitely some things to weigh out. Of course, the Noodler's Black is also a quarter of the price. So definitely some factors involved there, but I did want to compare that just because it is such a, a monumentally, uh, you know, compared to black ink. It's just such a staple in the, in the ink world. Um, I do have some other inks to compare it to. Got my good old swabs here. Um, lots of blacks to choose from. I really kind of got nitpicky and chose some of the closest ones or some of the most popular names of black inks so that I could give you an idea of what you could be in for with Takesumi. I will say the Takesumi swab on this paper 
didn't look as dark as the writing does or the swab on the rhodia paper. You know, this is Clairefontaine pollen cardstock that I use. I uh, do all my swabs on this. Every now and then I run into an ink that it just looks a little washed out. So it looks a little washed out in the swab here, but the writing is where it really shines more. So Aurora Black is kind of a staple black as well, known as one of the darkest blacks in the fountain pen world. Um, it is darker than Takesumi, but not by too much. It has a little more of a yellowish greenish tinge to it as well. You can really see when looking at them side by side, a little bit of the red in here, a little bit of the yellow in here. Um, but Aurora Black is very wet, very dark. It's hard not to compare. Um, also one that's easy to compare to that, Noodler's Borealis Black, uh, like the play on the name there, Borealis. Um, that was meant to, you know, kind of mimic the properties of Aurora Black. So these two are, you know, basically identical. But I find a Aurora, the Borealis Black is actually a little bit darker. Very flows very wet and stuff. So both of these are going to be darker than Takisumi. Um, some other ones that compare to Dietramentus Black. That one is fairly close to Takasumi, you know, still very wet, looks very, very close in color. Um, Lamy Black is really kind of more of a gray. This is, this is a little more of what I was expecting with the bamboo charcoal name, was kind of a gray looking black. Um, but Takasumi is darker than Lamy Black, I'm, I'm pleased with that. Um, Private Reserve Velvet Black, that one is darker, but you can really see a strong uh, hint of color in that one. It's got a very strong red component to it and it almost has kind of a yellowish sheen you can see there. Um, that is an interesting ink uh, but looks a very different kind of black than Takesumi. You would think that you know black ink is black ink but oh no, oh to seasoned fountain pen people all black inks are not created equal. Private Reserve Invincible Black is another one. Let me clear some of these off. Invincible Black this is the reformulation of Invincible Black. It used to be super, super dark, really saturated. They reformulated it, and now it is not that anymore. It's really kind of gray looking and kind of flat. So, yeah, it was kind of a bummer. But anyway, that's something to compare to. Uh, it was reformulated about a year ago as of the making of this video. Uh, J. Urban Pearl Noir is another, you know, fairly good staple black ink. Um, that's J. Urban's only black. They uh, are a little bit darker here than the Takesumi. Um, still, that's, that's a good ink though. Noodler's Black, here that is. Um, you can see how dark and, you know, and substantial that ink is. It's a, I want to say it's a vibrant black, if that even makes sense. But, you, you know, looking at it next to a, a less vibrant black color, it, it, that's, I don't really can't think of any other way to describe it. Um, but it is darker and definitely has a stronger yellow tone to it. Uh, Waterman Intense Black really doesn't look very intense compared to most of these other blacks, but um, you know, it's, it's there. It's not as dark as Takesumi. Um, still flows well though. Pelican Edelstein Onyx. This is actually a pretty decent black. You know, it is expensive, kind of like the Iroshizuku, um, but it's a pretty dark black, a um, little darker than Takesumi. Um, you know, that's, that's not a bad black actually. I'm, I'm, I, I'm kind of a fan of that one. Uh, Sailor Gentle Black is another one. That one's not too far off from Takesumi. It's a little, um, little bit darker there. And then uh, last one is Noodler's Heart of Darkness. That's another really dark one. So you can see the Takesumi really kind of falls in the middle there. Um, I really kind of pulled out some of the darkest, you know, like Noodler's Black, Heart of Darkness, um, Edelstein Onyx is, pr is pretty much there, Aurora Black, Borealis. These are like some of the absolute blackest black inks that you can get in the fountain pen world. And Takesumi, you know, will throw some punches uh, in that fight. So Takesumi, even though it's not the darkest black for what you're getting, the good flow, ease of cleaning, that kind of thing, uh, it definitely has some things going for it. I am, I am very pleased uh, with the Takesumi. Again, the only letdown I had was that dry time, but for me, that's not a deal breaker. For you, you know, I'll let you make that assessment yourself. But now you have at least a little bit better idea of this ink, and I hope you like the review. That's my assessment of Pilot Oroshizuku Takesumi. If you have anything to add or if you have any questions or anything, just hit me up in the comments. Thanks for spending time with me today, and right on.